This is CMG Podcast. Change, maintain, grow. I'm Keith Marsima. This is my brother, Ben Shea. Episode two. My man, we're back. <laughs> good morning, good morning. Good to see you. Nice and... Uh, yeah. Well, we're recording, nice the, we're recording this on a um, Thursday now. Full disclosure, everyone. We're recording Thursday. So it yeah. gives us a couple of days to edit and then we want to drop... Probably moving forward, we want to drop kind of first thing Monday morning. Just, just to, learning uh, from from last week, eh? <laughs> yeah, well, it's <laughs> all learning last class. week. Yeah. We, um, I think we still got some good value out of it, but it was we went to record on Sunday to drop on Monday, and obviously, uh, we thought it was all right. But you know, we're only novices in the editing stage, and there has been a few issues with volume and whatnot. So we just think recording earlier is going to give us more of a chance to get through it, and then yeah. we want we want to drop. I think there's like probably algorithms and that out there that say launching podcasts on certain days maybe get more hits but i think our point of view is if we drop it on a monday it's hopefully going to start people's weeks off well and if they're coming off like they're coming off a big bender and they're not ready to listen to a monday and they can't really listen to it till wednesday well you know it's still it's still there you can listen to it all week then it's available all week so that's our uh that's our thinking behind that and we it'll be weekly drops anyway so everything's going to be current there's there won't be nothing yeah, old not, we want to be talking about it'll be yeah frequent drops so yeah not, we should not be too good much now. is going to change so yeah weekly yeah just rolling off that our last episode we got some good feedback on it still and not all of it yeah. was positive 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 but there was good some some good constructive criticism which is good and but like, thanks to everyone that got back to us that was that was awesome um, yeah a lot of feedback good feedback both um positive and negative but it's all good feedback for us um yeah before we go on i just want to say sorry for <laughs> For the technical issues we had um definitely rookies but um yeah we're learning we're learning yeah, and, and if you didn't notice them yeah don't worry about it it's all good <laughs> um, yeah no nah, we got heaps of good uh constructive criticism back and you know plenty of positive messages too that's how you kind of learn and grow i think that's a big thing with people these days if they cop a bit of criticism or someone tells them something they're doing wrong and it's like they're snowflakes like they melt like you just cop it on the chin take some ownership and go oh yeah how can i improve that instead of always hitting back with yeah but like oh yeah but making excuses is not going to get you yeah anywhere, so. and it all it's comes all- back to that mindset thing hey like everything just ties back to that mindset like if you're not in a mindset ready to grow then you're always going to fall back on those old habits of always coming up with excuses so yeah man we're definitely taking all the negative and positive and um learning from it growing from it yeah i think we've got nearly over 350 downloads now we've got a couple of we've got like 18 five stars reviews which is good nothing under five stars so um keep them coming a couple of uh comments you know on our apple podcast that was yep. awesome thank you very much and well the reason we're kind of not no one really knows the times we're recording but it's early as in france for you because you've been up we're in the cha- uh the change maintain grow the comfort zone challenge you've just finished yours this morning you're doing the uh burpees 13 13 burpees on the minute for 13 minutes total of 169 burpees so massive yeah. blow out. i don't think yeah. people not comfortable not comfortable that's for sure so it's only 13 minutes but i don't like if you haven't done too many burpees before just try doing 13 burpees on the minute for a couple of minutes and see how you go like i do yeah. I, I consider myself pretty good at burpees and I'll, if i want a decent bite i'll do like 12 on the minute for 10 minutes and yeah. you know, that blows me out so you're going 30 and this morning you didn't put your video up eh? no nah, well <laughs> when i spoke to you after the first time i did the the burpees we didn't have any power here we had a a blackout for, for 30 minutes 40 minutes so i couldn't really record in the dark and um yeah someone hit me up i was like oh where's your video i was like oh fuck right, <laughs> then i did it the challenge again <laughs> so you've done it again so you've doubled up this morning which is yeah, it's doubled not, up it's not for anyone else to see but you know yeah you've, let the haters hate but you've done it for yourself it's you versus you because it's a good thing to come out of it. like a lot of people are jumping on which is huge and obviously by the time this drops on monday we're going to be you know five days into it we're going to be a lot further into it so yeah anyone can jump on any time and moving forward it's not just about this comfort zone challenge it's just about the whole principle in general you know test yourself push your comfort zones set yourself new boundaries and you know keep leveling up from there but some people are hitting me up just on private message and they don't even want to be you know kind of put out there 
like to say yeah. that they're doing it, but that's, you know, that's the thing. No one else has to see you doing it. It's on you. It's all, it's all about, you know, yeah, exactly. testing yeah. yourself, pushing yourself. So, And for those that's tagging us on um, Instagram, big shout out to you. Thank you for jumping on board. Um, yeah, you can, everyone can go, go on our Instagram and, and check out our stories. We, we, uh, we share all the tags that we, we get tagged in. So big shout out to you. Um, yeah, big effort. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's good because I, I got a message from one of the um, guys the other day saying, you know, it's so mo- motivating seeing other people do work, you know what I mean? You see yeah. other people doing it and they tag you and we put it up as much as we can. Sometimes it's hard because like, with our page, we're only kind of following people um, that we're getting like heaps of content from what we don't even follow ourselves. We just kind of follow um, yeah. you know, Jocko, Willie, Joe Rogan, a few guys like that. Cause we're just testing the waters at the start. We're not trying to, you know, not follow people. So we've got like cool followers to um, follow yeah. content. We're just trying to keep our content honed in so we can pass it on. And sometimes when people share, their stories and whatnot and they tag us if they're private we you know we can't pass it on so if we don't if we don't reshare your stuff it's not because you know we don't want to it's just sometimes it doesn't pop up but we do our best to get around it and it's probably something we'll you know navigate yeah. moving forward obviously we're only a couple of weeks in but yeah it's awesome everyone's kind of interacting and uh, yeah and a reason for that as well at the moment we want to keep the cmg page separate from us we don't want to make it personal um like me and ben spoke about um privately we want the page to be for everyone's about the community so that's uh, one reason why we're not following anyone back is yeah we wanted to keep it separate from our personal pages yeah that's that's a good point um so with the with the challenge i was only kind of thinking the other day it's like where that that's a big thing about us like as you said you've just done that twice this morning just to put the video up you know i'm yeah. running the 13ks at um 3 a.m we're doing this with everyone we're not kind of saying to people oh yeah you need to get yourself out of your comfort zone to you know through um through adversity comes growth challenge yourself go out and do a challenge you know rather yeah. like, well, we're actually doing it like this is for us too because i was only thinking the other day like I remember it's amazing like once you do uh, some challenges or, or you push yourself the amount you can draw back draw, draw yeah. back on it later like so through that COVID period doing the um, like I ran that marathon and I had no water so then what, when we done the 72 hour fast we done it together obviously in different countries but we continued training training through that as well and then um, you trained the whole way through and I think you were still working. I, I trained and then I done a half marathon at the 60 hour mark, like while well, I was yeah. already depleted, but I kind of drew back on that. Oh, I've already ran a freaking marathon with no water. I can run a half marathon just cause I haven't, you know, eaten in 60 yeah. hours. I can run a half marathon and then how that flows on. I remember, um, but once I think Gog- Dr. Goggins has a, has a saying for that, doesn't he? You want to explain to to everyone? Yeah, well, that's it. He calls it the cookie jar. Right? Like, if you read his yeah. book, um, can't hurt me. It's an awesome book, and apparently, it's a, I haven't listened to an, an audio book, but apparently, it's even better on audio book because he kind of jumps in and explains what's going on chapter by chapter. But yeah, he calls it you know going to the cookie jar, and you draw on other experiences to yeah. get you through the ones you're on. Like I remember once we were when I was playing at Ipswich, we were playing in. Um, we are playing that weekend in, in Townsville and we actually yeah. had, a, had a job working in, um, in Cairns. So like, I worked all week in Cairns, like we're working 10 hour days, like going hard, like scaffolding. I was, I'm, scaff- I'm a scaffolder. So like, you know, you're going hard, you probably over that week period, you know, we moved hundreds of ton of steel and, you know, you move it all by hand. You're not like, yeah. got anything to help you so like we pumped uh, pumped the job up all week and then i'd organized with the coaches so i didn't train all week that i was flying from um cairns to townsville that that day and i was going to play that night so i went to work you know still that morning like we've been doing 10 12 hour days all week just yeah pump and steel worked all morning um jumped on a plane flew to townsville and townsville like townsville blackhawks they're one of the you know probably top four teams in the comp um, jumped off the plane, went straight straight to the game, and I remember walking out to the um, walking out to the warm up because I'd only just got there, and I was thinking in my head like, 
it can either go one or two ways. I can be saying to myself, like, fuck me, I've just been like absolutely under the pump all week. I haven't hardly any sleep. I've worked all this morning. I've had to catch a plane. You know, there's no way I can play. Or you have this other mindset where you think like, none of these other motherfuckers have done that. You know what I mean? That They wouldn't even yeah. think about pushing themselves through that. And I kind of like, it's just that what kind of psyche you want to take. And then like, you know, obviously I took the right one. And we didn't get the win that night, but, you know, as I said, they're a good team. But I kind of went out, I still played 80 minutes in the middle and got through and, you know, done my job. And I actually, like, probably, like, played pretty well. But, you know, as I said, there's yeah. things where your mind's at. Whereas a couple of years earlier, I remember um, it was a bye weekend for uh, the comp I play in. But the coach said to me, because at this stage, I was this was kind of pre-personal development. I was probably walking around at 115. He's like, oh. Yeah we need you to play a reserve grade to get some match fitness in this weekend off. Uh, yeah. But you can go home for the week. Just make sure you're back for the game. So I went home for the week, obviously, like pumping darts, drinking beers. <laughs> and um, I've like had a massive night on the Friday night, flew back to Brisbane, played on Sunday. And obviously, if I had that mindset, I could have either thought one or two ways, like it's got to go one way or the other way. <laughs> and like, yeah. dead set, in the warm-up, I was trying to pull my hamstring because like, there's no way I wanted to play that game. You know? <laughs> and then I remember yeah. I chased this guy down, I tackled him. I was absolutely gone. Could hardly get up. He's kind of got up, just half pushed me. I've just started throwing punches like for no, no, <laughs> no reason. D- didn't land any. I was that tired. Looked up at the ref and he's like buying a penalty. I was like, man, you've got to give me 10 in the bin. And he's like, no, <laughs> no <laughs> chance. So, like, you know, that's just a difference in mindset. I think, you know, along the journey that I've picked up, like, you can either look for the excuses or look for yeah. the pos- positives. In it. And I guess in a roundabout way, that's back to the comfort zone challenge. Yeah. I experienced something actually pretty recently. You probably know I'm not into long distance running. And then, you know, I I look up to you and I admire you a lot. And seeing you doing your challenges, I've decided to, you know, start going on longer runs. In the first couple longer runs that I, that I done, I'm about halfway in, I'm about like six, seven Ks in. And I've got like you, I get to that point where I'm thinking, fuck, just stop now. You know, no one's going to know go back home and then on the other side I'm thinking fuck we're running till my legs fall off. <laughs> I don't care how much you hurt we're fucking running you know and I think we spoke about it before as well where if you can get to a place you know that dark place and if you can like you know step back and look at yourself and ask the question fuck are you really hurting are you, are you actually hurting or is it just your main uh your, your mind playing our uh, mind games and I think a lot of people don't really you know take that walk down that dark pathway and I think we need to go down that that um, dark place more often. Well, yeah, that's a it's a good point because yeah, you as you said, you got to take yourself out of that context sometimes, eh? And just like yeah, because obviously your mind, your mind wants you, your mind wants to protect the body, and the mind is you know it's our biggest enemy because our mind knows all our weaknesses. You know what I mean? So it will find anything that it can find to make you pull out because it doesn't want to go through that. So I can remember you kind of said that to me previously and when i um when i done that 72 hour fast and then i'd done the the half marathon at the 60 hour mark i got back and because i was going to 72 hours i still obviously had like 80 hours 10 hours before i got the 72 hour mark so i still couldn't eat or anything and i got in the shower and i was like it was just so happened it was anzac day and i got in the shower because it, obviously my body was depleted I've done a piss and it come out like Coca-Cola Brown. And I'm like, oh man, like this is what they talk yeah. about. Like this is what endurance athletes get, like raptomyosis. Like my, my muscles are breaking down. It's going into my kidneys. And I just started like, I was like <laughs> going into the horrors. I was starting to wig out. And then I just kind of, and obviously I was by myself in the shower. So I couldn't talk to anyone. And then I just calmed down. I was like, just take yourself out of the situation. I just kind of like took myself out. And then because it was Anzac Day, I was just thinking like, you know, what am I even talking about? Like prisoners of war and things of that yeah. nature. They've gone through so much more. Like you haven't eaten for like three days like, and you've walked 21, you, you ran 21 Ks. Like, you know, who yeah. cares? Like people can go three weeks with, without eating and, and survive. So like you've just got yeah. to step back. Obviously, it's easy to get caught up in the emotion and things like that. But yeah, just take yourself out of the situation like you said and think, is it actually, is it actually that bad? It's like Because I think a yeah. lot of the things like when you pull the pin on something, you're, you're like, say, you're doing something physical, mental, whatever it is, and then you're like, no, nah, I can't do this anymore, I'm done. You pull the pin and then you get your composure. 
10, 15, 20 minutes a day later, whatever it is, that's when you get that regret and you're like, oh, fuck, I wish yeah. I stuck that out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I think, I think it's important to, to step back and look at the bigger picture because we're so caught up in ourselves and we think like, you know, we're, we're the only thing that matters in this world. When really like, I think it, I, every time I go down, you know, near the ocean by the beach and I get the thought like, fuck, I'm, I'm nothing. You know, when you look at that big body of water, you're like, <laughs> yeah. fuck, you're a speck compared to the ocean, you know. And I think it's important to step back and take things into um, perspective. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what we do, we do get caught up in ourselves, and there's so much that goes on outside. But that's you know, back to the challenge. That's what we're kind of we're doing this as well to put push off onto other people. And it's not just you know, if you haven't done it during the challenge, go out and challenge yourself just once off. You know, in two weeks' yeah. time, like do something so you've got something to refer back to, and and everything else that we're pushing as well, like you know, cold showers, which we're going to get into further down the track, morning routines, like mindfulness everything that we're talking about like diet and exercise nutrition drinking which i think we'll probably you know go into drugs and alcohol a bit more next week i reckon like we'll obviously probably yeah. do a full episode on that but you know we're all kind of, we're going through our own stuff on that like i'm coming up six months like you know without any alcohol at all you know next week yeah. so you know everything well, I'm, I'm still learning i'm still learning to drink really i really don't i have a problem where i don't know my limit in everything you know in exercise diet and alcohol as well like i don't have a limit like i have a problem not knowing when to pull back yeah but i don't have a problem going 100 because everything i do <laughs> fuck i'll go to 100 you know but um yeah like you said alcohol man i'm still i'm still learning yeah hopefully hopefully i learn um sooner than, than later but I think the point, like, is it when we talk about it, we're actually either doing it, gonna do it, or we've or we've done it. You know what I mean? So, like, I'm talking yeah. about it from one point that I haven't drank for six months. Not yeah. So I'm never gonna drink again. Like, I'm going through all this stuff now, which I said we'll probably delve more into next week. But you know, you're still you're still finding that balance as well. But you're trying to find that balance. It's not like you're telling people, oh yeah, you've got to find the balance, and this works and that works, and no. you're not you're not looking for it yourself like we're just kind of we're real about it i guess i think that's something we should talk about more is not only the positive things you know also the the negatives and the hard things that we're going through as well that's that's actually a good point because i don't know if i told you or not but one of the um, messages that we got the feedback was from my cousin beck and she's like when we're talking about the covid stuff last week which we probably didn't go into as much as we should have but she's like you you put it out that you it was like probably a more positive period than it was like when we're talking about our systems and falling back in our systems and i said yeah we had like struggling days and down days but you know we done this this and this and this and like it was positive and then she goes like if you looked at your instagram you'd probably see you know a lot, a lot of positivity which is what we're trying to put out but then you kind of break it down more like the reason i went back to the farm for uh for the COVID period was because me and my partner, like both our jobs were up in the air. So we thought going back to the farm would reduce our cost of living. Like my partner's kind of lost it, lost her job. I'm lucky enough, I probably can go back to work, but I'm still studying full time at the moment that I'm enrolled. So I'm going to yeah see that out for a bit more. Then he went back to the farm. We weren't sure what was going on with money coming in. Um, this was like before all the COVID-19 supplements and any money from the government or anything like that. We weren't really sure what was going on. And then on top of that, like one of my mates he passed away like only at 27 years of age so you were back home you couldn't make contact with anyone you knew there was you know a whole range of things that went on in COVID that we probably didn't you know as you said we've got to talk about the negative side too to let people yeah. know it does happen and you know you would have had more stuff on your side as well like obviously in France as we talked about but yeah look we were in lockdown for for three months so my salary had been cut in half for three months but i was still paying bills had 100 percent. you know they didn't get cut yeah. in half so that was that was pretty tough but um yeah we definitely got to talk about the negatives as well i think a lot of people on social media only paint the good side the good picture and it's it's not it's not real you know it's all bullshit because we all know that we all go through tough times as well and we need to be real we need to show people that as well we don't want to be putting out there that we're only going through good times and that life is easy because life isn't easy. You know, life is a challenge. Yeah, that's, it's definitely something we've got to be mindful of, you know, moving forward because we know the negative stuff we're going through. As I said, we're trying to promote as much positive as we can, but yeah, it's definitely not all sunshine and, and rainbows. It's, it's both no. sides, which, which we're going to uh, keep throwing out as we go. I was lucky enough this week 
I went out to that school with Jade and Nicarima yesterday and Glenn Azar. I went out to a, yeah. uh, a high school with them. Oh. So oh, anyone that's listening that doesn't know, Jade and Nicarima, he's, um, he's my teammate currently, but he's also a guy who kind of had the world at his feet. He was 18 year old, had a NR- big NRL contract, made his debut for the Roosters, uh, you know, World Club Challenge, was playing first grade at, you know, 18 had a $650,000 contract and then kind of threw it all out the window, got done twice, drugs, drink driving, lost everything, went through court for a couple of years. So he's kind of out on the front foot now. He's turned his life around, you know, probably only really recently. This was this probably happened, you know, three, four years ago. And probably yeah. in the last six to eight months, he's turned all that stuff around. And, you know, he's got himself in the best mindset. Like I look to him for inspiration now through what yeah. he's been Did you want to give the... Did you want to give their podcast a shout out? Oh Who yeah, listen that's for anyone yeah. that um doesn't know Jaden and and the road chat group. That is yeah another podcast. Yeah, we probably like we talk about guys on here that you know we probably should explain a bit more what they are. But like Glenn yeah. Azar, Jane Nick Rem, and then they're on a podcast as well with two other guys, and uh, Brody and Zaya. And it's yeah, it's called the Bro Chat. It's it's it, it is a real good listen, but it's probably yeah, definitely. Like I was saying to them the other day, it's probably. Um, the PG version of where we want to get, where we want to go eventually. Yeah. Cause uh, Jade was saying, oh, I can't wait to come on to, to your podcast and, you know, let my hair down and tell a few stories. And I was saying like, yeah, when you, you were kind of fighting around <laughs> in Sydney at that time too, I was like, yeah, you and Keith <laughs> like, ran into each other at one stage. You just wouldn't even know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, they're in a cubicle together or something. <laughs> But yeah, yeah so but I, there's I, definitely a good listen that um yeah. that bro chat podcast. Yeah, go and over check him out. Yeah, definitely go jump on there. But um, so I went out to the school. So his thing is now, that, or they're going out both as a gro- uh, as the bro chat and you know Glenn and Jaden individually as well, going out to schools and talking to year nine, 10, 11 and twelve kids, and just kind of trying to explain them the ins and outs of how we can set ourselves up for failure, I guess, and self-sabotage. And it, like I went to watch and I, it was like, I got so much out of it and you can take so much out of it moving forward. And I was just thinking like, it would be so good if something like that was um, around when we were in year nine, 10, 11 and 12, whether we would have listened or not, but I de- think it definitely would have planted some seeds. But two of the yeah. like main things I got out of it, which is applicable to anyone that I was thought I'd share because you know I haven't told you about this yet, but uh, one of the things that they were saying, or well, Glenn was put like Jaden told his story and you know the ins and outs, and then Glenn was drawing like a lot of comparisons of how things flow on. So pretty much like one of the the sayings or one of the quotes that you know was kept getting run, uh, rammed home was what you do in what you do in anything is what you do in everything. So. You know, I mean, if you're taking shortcuts in one aspect of your life, it doesn't matter how good you are potentially at one thing or how talented you are. If you're taking shortcuts in other areas, you know, you might still excel at this other thing for X amount of years, months, whatever it is. But eventually, those shortcuts are going to come up, and everything's going to come back. And um, it's not going to stay exclusive. You know what I mean? Like you're not going to stay yeah. a, gun, a gun at this and then keep taking shortcuts in every other aspect. Like there might be certain times or it might be like one in a hundred or a very low percentage of people that can get through like that. Like you even look, say you'll get the story like Ben Cousins and that he would have got, he got through to a certain point, but eventually it all come crashing down. So it yeah. was just, yeah, that, what you're doing, anything and what you're doing, everything. And that was just relating to the school kids. Like wear your uniform. Um, you know, if you make a mistake, own up to it. You know, don't, don't bully kids like little things like that, that reflect on and like roll on and on and on throughout your life. And you don't even know. And eventually, you know, they'll come back to bite you on the ass. Would you say you could um, draw that back to, to people's habits? Like saying, wear your uniform, stand up straight, be polite. All those little things. I think, go on. No, a hundred percent what you're saying. Like everything, everything flows on to who you are. Like as when I was back, you know, six years ago like but probably between the period of kind of 2010 to 2015 like you could probably tie everything in my life to what i was doing like i had like a beard i was overweight you know what i mean i kind of attached myself to that identity like drinking drink pretty heavily and whatnot because i so if you just took my appearance for 
for um, instance, like I had this big beard and kind of long hair, or not long hair, but like shaved sides and that, because it was a time like Vikings was in, like the TV show. And yeah. stuff. <laughs> kind of think I was uh, ragging the laugh book, but you know what I mean? Like that like, <laughs> reflected everything I was doing there then reflected across my, because, you know, I wasn't taking care of myself really. I was doing just enough to get by, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. But now that I kind of see everything intertwined, like, you know, I'll go and get, I'll go and get a haircut, you know, once, you know, once a week, you know, like try and look neat and tidy all I can. Shout yeah. out the black canvas barbershop. <laughs> um, and same with you, you know what I mean? Like, you know how how you represent yourself kind of flows across all aspects of your life yeah yeah i definitely agree man totally agree i was talking to one of the younger guys back when we were training a couple of months ago before the lockdown and i've asked him my missus took the car so i asked him to drop me back home after training and when i get in his car his car is a total mess you know yeah and i've and i was getting lifts off him for for one or two weeks and I started telling him, man, you need to clean your car. You need to clean your car. I said, nah, why? And then if, you, if, if I didn't get in the, in the car with him, I didn't see his car, but I just seen him at training, you can kind of tell I was a bit scruffy. Yeah. And then you go into his car, his car's the same. And then I end up going over his house and his house is the same <laughs> as well. So, you, you know, that just comes back to like, it's across his whole life. He's just a scruffy guy because <laughs> it's just the way he conducts himself. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. De- but it's not to say that you can't get like, you can't get scruffy at times or you can't get a messy yeah. car or if you get like fucking shit on the floor in your car, like all of a sudden your life's off the rails. It's just that, you know, no. the whole kind of concept, as you're saying, like when you looked at that back to back to back to week in, week out of yeah. his car and then you looked, you know, you took the broader picture in across his whole life, you, you know, you can start to draw, you know, you draw them comparisons and everything starts to line up. You've got a choice in everything you do and it, and it can start from right now. If you are, acting in a certain way like when you st- you can you can stand up hold your shoulders back straighten yourself up and like walk out that door treat people with respect like it starts from it, you don't have to wait for a perfect point to start because that's his other point was um like his son has some like he's intellectually disabled yeah so he's he goes to a special school and what he was saying to those guys in that the, you know, those young kids you know you're 9, you're 10, you're 11, you're 12 world at their feet young guys athletic he's like everyone has a choice. You have a choice to do whatever you want to do. And you, you know, you might think you've got to be here. You might think you've got to play football. You don't, you can go do whatever you want to do. Like you are lucky to be here and you're lucky to do whatever you want to do. Cause he's like his son or just in general across the board, there's so many people in life just not as gifted or not. They don't have the abilities. They weren't, they were just born like it. There was nothing. Um, they didn't do anything wrong. That's just how, how things were, uh, how God made them. You know what I mean? And like he was yeah. saying, Whenever we're thinking, you know, oh, I've had a bad day, done this, done that, like everything's against me. Like you think there's people out there that would swap their um, their best day, like the best day of their life, they'd swap that for your worst day of your life in an instant, you know what I mean? Like you don't actually realise how how lucky you are. And yeah. you know, that, that was a huge one for me because sometimes, as you said, like, as we are talking about before, it comes back like you get caught up in your own shit. You become like so you've got to take yourself out of the situation. Like for his instance, like he drives, drives past uh, a footy field and sees kids out there playing footy at lunchtime and he thinks, you know, his son's never going to be out there and play. Like we've got opportunities to do things no matter what, even if we've got things going against us, there's still yeah. a lot of people worse off and we can still make the most of our opportunities you know listening to that we could as people as humans we could be a bit more grateful you know like i got up this morning and i had a thought before i started my my burpees i was like fuck i don't want to be doing this but then on on the flip side i was thinking fuck i'm grateful that i'm able to do burpees you know because some people there that's got no legs got no arms i can't do one fucking burpee Uh, so i'm going to do the burpees i'm going to have a smile on my face you know yeah as people we definitely can be more grateful man there was teachers there too and they were kind of saying, you know, we say this to kids, that to kids, but, you know, they don't listen. It's good to have some outside people come in. And this isn't like against those teachers or anything, but like sometimes you just, like you look at people, if someone's telling you something, like this is kind of coming back to what we're about, you look at someone and they're telling you something and you kind of, it registers in your head if you think they're about it or not, you know what I mean? Like if a teacher's yeah. telling you like you need to uh you know, you need to straighten up, put your shoulder back, tuck your shirt in, like do this, do that, and then you look at them and you're like, 
brother, you look like you've just rolled in here like, <laughs> off, you know, yeah. two-day bender. You haven't had a shave, like your hair's all messed yeah. up. you got a, um, you know, pot gut looks like you've been eating shit. Like, you know, you're telling me to shape up or ship out, but, you know, have a look at you. And that, <laughs> that's not directed at a teacher or anything, but I think that's what happens to a lot of us at schools and that when you when people are telling you, even in life, like just a general course, well, when people are telling you stuff to do, and they're not doing it and you can't see them doing it, you just, you don't take it seriously. Or when you see people actually putting in place what they're talking about, it's, it's so much more powerful. So but if like, you have, if you have a guy that that's talking about something that hasn't done, and then you ask him a question, you want him to draw back on experience. You don't want him to go back <laughs> and look through a textbook and yeah. say, Oh, hey, let me look for the answer. You know? Yeah. But that, and that was the other thing that we were kind of pushing off too. It's kids have to go through a certain amount of adversity to get their growth too. Like you can't, especially if kids are like time back in the rugby league and Jaden, like if kids excel at something, generally they get the way cleared from or the parents are clear their way, their way or the teachers are clear the way. So these little things like, um, you know, not paying attention at school, wearing the wrong uniform, bullying kids, anything like that, you know, kind of get swept to the side, swept to the side because they're good at like running, running the ball, kicking the ball. They're good at, you know, yeah whatever activity and then all they get all the way through all the way through and then once they get to life and things don't go to plan you know they get eaten alive because all those bad habits that they've developed you know they come back they're, they're still there as i said it catches up eventually yeah. and that was like just for me as a parent like not so much you know teachers filtering it back down to the kids and not letting them get away from stuff it's kind of makes you think as a parent too like yeah like i can't just keep letting my kids get away with stuff like yin and yang you've got to have that balance but you've got to you've got to put things in place that are gonna be long term like with yourself with your kids with you know whoever around you can't keep clearing clearing the path yeah. with people because and that just comes back to like sustainability it's not sustainable you know even if you're the fucking best footy player there's going to come a time where you can't play footy anymore and then you know what what are you going to do after that and i think a lot of guys get into trouble that do so well in sport and then they get to a time where sports finish, they've got nothing to turn back on. You know, sports finish, but their bad habits are still there. Everything is still in place. Their lifestyle is still there, but they don't have the thing that paid for that and that gave them that path, which is sport, you know. And it's, it's a big thing for me at the moment. Um, you probably know that I've started this um, part-time job where I'm starting to make that bridge from from uh, professional sport over to the to the working field and i think it's a big thing that we overlook in the sport in both rugby and rugby league i think it's um it put a topic to to talk on well it's a, it's a common thing like, through everything like you look at you know obviously we're not <laughs> making big dollars or anything we do but you know no. it's, across all things in life nba nfl you know nrl rugby league rugby union whatever you see guys on big money you just hear the stories yeah. all the time, like when they finish the league or when they finish doing what they do, they go broke because, yeah. you know, everything's probably like, through, they're always a star. They're always talented the whole way through the way it was cleared for them. But, you know, once they're kind of used up or those skills don't serve them anymore, they've got nothing to fall back on. Like they've got no plan B and they've got no, yeah. like they've got no personal development because they're used to treating people like shit and putting themselves you know, in the next bracket above them, they think they're actually better than people. Then really when that, when that, when that skill's gone and they come back to the real world and those people that they, they think they're better than they're better, yeah. they just come back, they eat them alive kind of thing because they've been through all that adversity. So they've got all this stuff backed up. They've got a plan, a plan B plan C and they yeah. eat these people alive. So like that's, you look at like the all blacks domination, not I don't follow rugby much. Obviously you're more of a rugby guy than me, but, just the simple thing here about the All Blacks all the time is, you know, they clean their own change room, like, which is, you know, you think it, yeah. it, it's so simple, but they're not just like coming in from the game, chucking all their strap and tape and rubbish on the floor and then walking out and expecting, you know, some poor old janitor or, or, or cleaner to come in and clean it up. They know their feet are still on the ground. They, I would have loved to have it when I was at school because, fuck, you carry a lot of things through from a lot of bad habits <laughs> through, or, you know, your childhood through school. And I guess we're kind of starting to realize all that now and make those, those yeah. correct. But it's also, I, I think it's also the environment that we grew up in as well. It's just, it was a normal thing, you know? Yeah. What we came up through was a normal thing because not only 
uh, we were doing that. Everyone around us were doing the same thing as well. Yeah. Well, it's not until you get to a point where those guys aren't around and, you know, you've got to fend for yourself. It's like, fuck, I can't keep doing the same thing anymore. Because you, you went to Matraville High, like sports high. Yeah, I finished up at Matto Sports, yeah. So you went to a sports high school. So obviously, like, this, um, <laughs> you know, education probably wasn't first and foremost for you. No. Nah, well, that was actually my second school because I, yeah. I started at Westfield Sports. Oh, yeah. So one to the other. Uh, yeah, and then finished at, at Matraville. And yeah. I, like I said, like I think in the pilot, I didn't even think I got my school certificate, you know, because I was yeah. just playing footy the whole time. And there was, fuck, it go months where I don't even think I'll, I'll see a classroom, just go there for training and then eat my lunch <laughs> and yeah. go home. For me, I got signed like an NRL contract at 16 and they yeah. said that they'd take me down to like a school in Sydney to finish off year 11 and year 12. So... They sent me to a boarding school in Sydney and put me through year 11 and year 12. And it was probably like, I think off the top of my head, it was 25 to 30 grand a year. Like not, not that I ever paid it because I was on scholarship. So, you know, I was lucky, yeah. but I just never had that realization. Like, I look back now and think, like, what a fucking idiot, you know what I mean? But yeah, I was there for two years at this boarding school. <laughs> I, I never handed one assignment in, like, not one. Like, the closest I come to hand an assignment in, I. I bought a USB because I didn't have it completed. And this teacher's like, man, you need to get something in. Bought a USB, dropped it on the ground, jumped on it, smashed it and took it to him. And I was like, oh, I was walking over with it. And I dropped <laughs> it on it. And that was the closest I come to hand assignment. My HSC, like my, a year 12 certificate, I just went in, wrote my name on it, put my head on the desk, went to sleep. And then as soon as the minimum time was up that you could leave, I was straight out the door because, you know, you just have footy yeah. put yeah. in your head and no one really tells you. And he did. Nah, well, people, because everybody. like you said earlier, they just like they just clear the way for you. You know, if you're if you're good at sport, fuck yeah, you can get away with this. You know, pass him on this subject, pass him on this subject. But, yeah, they they probably tell you, but you just don't take any fucking notice. You know what I mean? No, because no. as I said, it comes back to that thing. If people are telling, if you can't really see that in other people, you can't see them doing it. You know, they can yeah. tell you as much as you want, but like when you're young, it goes one ear and out the other. But yeah, it was. High school was definitely a fun time. I would have loved to go to a sports high school. I was at a boarding school, man, all boys. So, uh, yeah. but it was okay because I was still, I was playing footy on weekends. So I'd, I'd just go to school during the week and then I'd go stay at the boys' place on the weekend after footy or whatnot, stay out Saturday, Sunday. We was, you know, 17, 18, fake IDs, nightclubs. <laughs> you know, it was, yeah. it was a life, but it was, um, probably wasn't the best to reach your full potential or talent as of kind of as you realize now you know what i mean when you look back and think fuck yeah what a waste i think that's that's pretty good you got anything else you kind of want to add wrapping up as in moving forward for um, um no nah, probably just want to um encourage those that's jumping on the on the 31 37 challenge to, to keep going um yeah good effort from everyone if we keep going keep pushing through yeah, and enjoy the uncomfortable moments. Smile when you're doing your your challenge. And um, yeah, let's be grateful. Yeah, yeah, that's probably one thing I want to say. Let's be grateful. That's it. 100%. That, that, that's a real good one. And just, you know, again, with the comfort zone challenge, when, when we drop this, it'll be coming to an end. But even if you've missed it, you know, it's not you've got to wait for a challenge. Just find something to put yourself yeah. inside the comfort zone and build. Um, hit us up and let us know if you don't want us to share it, which a few people have hit me up and said, you know, I don't want to share what you're doing, but just message us or, you know, write it down yourself. You don't have to tell anyone, but I think putting it like a little bit in words, like writing it down somewhere, telling someone about it helps you be a bit more accountable. So yeah, jump yeah. on that. As I said, I think next week we'll probably go further into drugs and alcohol, which is our specialty, obviously. Oh, we've got a bit of knowledge about, so I'm pretty excited yeah. to get to that next week. Jump on that. And yeah, I also Sammy Kazak, I've done a little 15 minute podcast with him just to uh, kind of explain the CMG thing, yeah. more, which was good because do you want, like, do you want to give him um, his podcast a shout out so everyone could go jump on and have a listen? Yeah, his one is uh, if you're not sick of us on here and you want to jump on this us a bit more, like jump. Sammy's got some really good stuff actually. His podcast yeah, really is good. called Self -centered. The Self Centered Podcast. And also yeah. at, at Sam Kazak, oh, he's awesome. He's got another company called uh biddle bringing imagination to life he's like does videography and that he's like you know super talented and he's also charlotte Kazlick, the rugby seven superstar olympic gold medalist she's 
his sister. So yeah, Sam, Sammy's an absolute beast himself. I, I love hanging out with him, get so much inspiration from him. But it was just kind of good. I jumped on his and he just had like four or five questions to explain CMG a bit more. And I think when me and you talk, it's kind of good just to get someone else to ask you about it because you can get yeah. a few things more across. So yeah, jump on and listen to all this stuff. But there's a good overview of CMG on there. And yeah, if I've got to leave you with anything, it's probably how you do anything is how you do everything. And be grateful for what you've got because there's some people out there that would swap their best day for your worst day. So take yeah, care. Definitely. Right. We'll chat soon. See you, brother. See you, man.